Floating objects, cold spots, phantom footsteps, and mysterious lights. Like a like a white glow. It was, was no, it was daylight. It was just uh, it really, was, yeah. It was just like na I mean, just like pure daylight. I remember coming home from work, deadbolting the door and going upstairs. And as soon as I got upstairs, you know, we heard bang. I looked out and the door was open, but it had the deadbolt still sticking out. I remember thinking I probably need to sell it because I'm doing the upkeep, but I can't because I feel like something really will be found. Unexplained Cases is supported by the American Paranormal Press. Carrie Nyon and Cullen Therapies. Why are some places haunted while seemingly others are not? Why are some considered very haunted? One home in Mississippi appears to be very haunted when you consider the variety and frequency of documented supernatural activity. Under constant surveillance, the focus of two documentaries and countless investigations, what's become known as the house in between, once was just a uniquely designed home in Florence. In 2011, our own Darren Dito was an anchor and reporter for ABC affiliate WAPT. This was many years after our creation of Unexplained at the local CBS affiliate WJTV. Darren was the first journalist homeowner Alice Jackson entrusted with the secrets of her haunted house. On the outside, it looks like your typical home, but inside, it's anything but normal. The candle just got up and landed over there. It didn't just tip over and it didn't shoot over, it just kind of levitated over there and landed on the floor. We saw it, you know, we both saw that. We both saw that, mm-hmm. Floating objects, cold spots, phantom footsteps, and mysterious lights. Like a, like a white glow? It was, was no, it was daylight. It was just, uh, it really? was, yeah, it was just like, nah, I mean, just like pure daylight. Uh, right this here, woman who wants to go by the name Alice says she shared her home with spirits for the last two decades. Any idea why this is happening in your home? Uh, I, I don't. I'd be curious to know, but that, but that's why I called in. I called in the Mississippi that's Paranormal Society to get some answers. You can be able to see that it, that's the angle that we're in right now. Brian Riley and his team brought their high-tech equipment to search out the spirits. Could it be something, you know, attached to the land? Or maybe even an object in the house. Even before we cut the lights, our camera catches something strange. It's not a bright light. It's not like, it's not like daylight, but it's diffused, so you can see everything in the room. An orb of light flies from behind Alice. Investigators believe orbs are balls of energy, possibly spirits. Ten years later, in 2021, Darren reconnected with Alice, and she shared consistent and additional details about her house. So I, I was really the first person that you sat down with and told your story. Right, with, because somebody at work told me about you, and you know, still hasn't it, but he went and printed off some stuff off the internet about you. And so I thought, okay. And so when I called you, I didn't get you directly. Somebody else answered, and he said, what is this in regards to? And I had to say, you know, and I was like, please don't go get it. <laughs> Let me go through this. And and he he did. And <laughs> oh, I remember that's so funny. And, oh my gosh. And that's, and that was back in like October of 2011. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. That's when it was aired. You came about three or four weeks earlier than that, you know? Was it? Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, it was, it was, a, and I was telling the folks earlier about the experience that I remember driving up to your house Seemed like a very normal place, nice A-frame, mm -hmm. beautiful trees mm -hmm. all around, gorgeous in, mm -hmm. in Florence. And I remember getting the driveway. I'm like, this place is haunted. You know, that back bedroom that you went into the first time when you did that, it's heavy. Uh, yeah. It's it's it's, uh, it's, it, it's it's just, it's colder, it's heavy. It just has a whole different feel. And sometimes even that's worse than ever. Like at night in that room, it's really unsettling. And it's not just me because we when we would have people come over used to when we'd have like just let people come over we would just say go into the rooms and tell us what you feel 
And a lot of people would get physical symptoms in that room. You know, they would say, my head hurts. I feel dizzy. I feel like I'm in a train station with just so much activity. Uh, you know, just different physical symptoms in there. And even some of the investigators have had that too, you know. Now, I know there's cameras running there all the time. John Bullard and Brad Cooney mm -hmm. have been investigating the home for for years now, right? Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, what, and so so what, what have they discovered, I guess, in, in all the time that they've, have they been able to um, verify or find other new, mm -hmm. you know, other new um, kind of evidence? Well, you know, they, John has got hundreds of EVPs. I mean, he's, you know, he's got hundreds of EVPs. He's always liked those and he, you can get those fairly easily. And, uh, you know, he's gotten all kinds of light, you know, light balls and orbs and, you know, things that you can see on camera. And sometimes with your eyes, a lot of people see, like you saw when you talked to me that first time on camera, that yeah. fireball, you, you said, I see a, yeah. a light that went down and went up and it was on, it was recorded. So we yep. get people who see those with their eyes and then we get some who see them on film. So they've gotten all that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, all the, you know, equipment goes off and all that kind of stuff. In November, 2023, I visited this infamous home one afternoon. While I would have preferred to visit in the evening, if a location has reports of paranormal activity, one doesn't have to be there at night to experience this activity. And this day, I wouldn't be disappointed. It became clear to me how sharp Alice's mind truly is. Her recollection of events involving her home remain consistent and solid. So if I ever live through this situation, I, you know, I'm not ever going to spend the night here by myself again. And so, uh, I, so then I thought, so I, I found it, had another place I could go stay. And so uh, I'm not coming back here. And I didn't tell my neighbors or anything because I thought they were going to say something like, you know, uh, that's going to decrease our property values or we've got, we don't want people parking all over the yard or anything like that. So I never said anything to anybody. But <clears throat> at that point, I was talking about it at work and this coworker, he, he said, if you're, you know who Darren Dito is? And I said, no, I don't, I don't watch the news. I work all the time. And uh, he said, well, he won an Emmy for paranormal reporting, you know, investigative reporting. And uh, so he said, you should call him. And I thought, well, okay. Cause uh, he won't think it's crazy if he's already worked in that. And so, uh, I, I, I thought I'm not coming back here anyway, so now it doesn't matter what the neighbors think because I'm <laughs> I'm not going to be here, you know. But I thought I can't do this, and so uh, that's, it was like a last resort. But I was feeling real nervous because, and I called, and somebody else answered. He didn't answer, you know, obviously. And so I asked if I could speak to him, and he said, oh, "What is this in regards to?" And I was thinking, oh, <laughs> I don't want to have. To, I was thinking, don't make me say. <laughs> I don't want to speak it out loud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said, well, some strange things are happening at my house. And I heard the dude. And so he said, okay. And so he got him. And he was so nice and so sweet just instantly. And it, I was really amazed because I thought, because he said, Could you, would you be interested in filming? And I thought, well, I don't have anything to lose now. I mean, I'm in now, so I might as well. And, um, and so he said that would come out a certain day. And I remember thinking, how does he know I'm not a complete crack ball? I mean, what if he comes out here and I'm really nuts? Mm -hmm. You know, and... Uh, but he came, I mean, and I wasn't nuts, mm -hmm. but I was nervous because I thought, <clears throat> like, it's like today, everything looks normal. Mm -hmm. And I thought, everything looks normal. They're going to come in here, they're not going to find a thing, and they're going to think I'm a total nut case. That's what I was thinking. Sure. But the minute he started interviewing, we went in that back room, you know, I was telling him about that tunnel of light. And he said, while he was talking to me, he saw this ball of light that shot down and then up the wall. He said he saw it with his eyes, not just on the film. And so I thought, well, good. I felt a little validated, more relaxed, you know. And uh, sure enough, that was on the film. You know, when you pull that back, mm -hmm. it's on the film. Yeah. And so I thought, okay, I feel better. While visiting with Alice in the kitchen, we both hear what sounded like a wind chime or the clink of a glass from the living room. Unfortunately, I wasn't recording at that moment, but this moment is immediately afterwards. Oh, sure, thanks. I was about to say, so to me, the first thing I thought of was wind chime uh-huh. Piano note. Oh, no. Well, that little piano plays all the time. Like this little thing. I mean, this little, uh, this little keyboard. In fact, I'll turn it on because <clears throat> I think it will play even when it's not turned on. These things are weird. Oh, it's, it is on. It is on. It is on. So. Yes, I'm sorry. Well, oh, like, no. It wasn't like that. But I heard the little. The that little it was a clink. Almost like a. And that's where I was like. Okay. But, this, but, you, but you heard it too. Yeah. Okay, now this, uh, and I, oh, <clears throat> okay. <laughs> so, 
Okay, so I have a little guy to help. There's so much. <laughs> well, it is. And, and you know, so many, I even started writing it down categories, you know, and it got to be the many, you know, like sound. Really? Okay, you got you, music. You could have an anthology. <laughs> it's it like like sounds like music. Okay, yeah. music. Uh, okay, uh, okay. Things come on. Things like that. Uh, whistling. You know, we've got whistling documented. John's heard right. it. I mean, we heard it out in the backyard. Whistling sound. We we hear wind chimes. Wind chimes. Okay. Ice cream truck. One time, ice cream truck. Look, really, I'm not kidding. I <laughs> I had a little <clears throat> like step grandson, yeah. and he, you know, all the kids love this house, yeah. and so he'll come. He wants to spend night, and so uh, we uh, we heard. Music, like you know, music, and I thought music box. We recorded it, you know. I, we called Brad, and he he runs it back, and he sent us a clip, so we sent it to Kendall. And Kendall said, "That's the that's the ice cream truck." We said, "Ice cream truck it is eight thirty at night. <laughs> There's not even we're not in a neighborhood where ice cream trucks go. We're not. I mean, yeah, no. yeah." And he said, "Well, that was the ice cream truck." So I thought, "Well, shit, I mean, that's weird." But anyway, then later I was telling my neighbor over there about, it, and she said, "We haven't." Oh, broken down. I'm talking about antique ice cream truck in the backyard. I said, really? And I said, let, let me let me go look at that. And Kendall said, go take pictures. And I did. And I've got them. But they're, it's ancient. I mean, it's like an antique. It's yeah. And I said, well, does the music play? And she said, no. She said, that thing hadn't had a battery in years. I mean, it's just no. And she tried to make it no, mm -hmm. no, no, mm -hmm. no. And if she did, I don't think it would have been loud enough to hurt in this house. But He's been fascinated since always. But anyway, so one time his mom is real scary, you know, real scary, and uh, she, she won't spend the night. She won't even walk in here hardly. But she came in here one time with him and and the daughter, okay. And he was in the bathroom, and the daughter was right here. And uh, the daughter said, "Mom, do you believe in guys?" And she said, "Probably not, unless unless something happened to me." Mm. Well, that little keyboard that was sitting over there started play. It played like twenty seconds at least, which is a long time for something like that. It was, and we all heard it. And it took us a minute because we're thinking, is that your cell phone? Is that mine? You know, you try to wait all that and we're thinking, no, no, it's not. So we went over here and listened and that thing was, was playing. Now, wait a minute. Now, that's okay. Now, that's not the first time. The first time it'll do that. But it, but if it does it again, it's not right. So, but anyway, uh, but anyway, that's what it was doing, except it lasted like 20 seconds. Huh. But, but but it wasn't, hadn't just been turned on. Okay. It do it once. But anyway, okay. And I noticed that I went over there to watch it <clears throat> and the keys didn't depress. Oh, it was play the keys didn't depress, okay. Okay. and I've heard that thing play two or three times. Uh, whenever somebody's playing the organ, they'll join in, but the keys don't depress while the music plays. I don't know why. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. I know it. I don't know anything. I've made a metal bus, but I don't know why. You know. But anyway, what? so so anyway, Stephanie, that happened, and her daughter was there, and so then. Tyler came running out of the bathroom because I had this little Turkish evil eye. You know, it's supposed to protect against mm -hmm. evil. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I got that in Turkey. And, uh, and uh, but anyway, so he he came running out here and he said, this was, he said, this, we heard it, you know, he said, this broke. He said, I didn't touch it. He said, I swear I didn't touch it. The top, the little thing that it hung up just split and it fell, which could have happened, but it happened all at the same time. Mm -hmm. And so her, her mother, who was already spooked, She's never been back in the house. She'll drop him off out there, but she's never been back. But the little girl, she didn't come back in. That was three years ago because she's 16 now. She was 13. And when she said when she pulled up with Tyler, her brother, she said when she pulled up, she said she saw a figure in a top hat, shadow, that mm. came out with a female with an old-timey suitcase, a bag, a suitcase thing. Alice shares another unexplained moment in her home. A decorative metal skeleton hand and arm apparently fell one day in the middle of the kitchen floor. As you'll see, that's not something to easily happen. I'm gonna reach up there and, uh, and take, uh, take that down. I mean, just, you know, just naturally, just take that down. What'd you have to do to get down? I Lifted it up. You have to lift it up. Okay. Right? You have to lift it up. So right. whatever in here, okay, and another thing, see, it won't go any other way. There's, you know, the, there's no other way it'll go. Is that little space right there? Right. But if I try to just pull it off, yeah, it's, like not gonna, it's not going to go. you got to lift it up and pull it off. So right. whatever did that, did that, and it went. It sounded louder than I promise at the time, but we came running in here and there it was. And so we're, then we tried to figure out how it did what? that. And, and you can see there's, that's the only space it's going to fit. Everything else will slide through. Well, the other part would be, so now did you find it about where you just dropped yeah, it? Yeah, just right in the middle of the floor. Which again, if that had just fallen. Oh yeah, it would have just fallen It would have right been there. right there. That's true, I didn't even think about that. But it, yeah, it was right in the middle but of the floor. But this is a complete jump. So it had to use some kind of 
force or we're power. Back, we're back to the energy part. Yeah. There's something going on. There's something you know, going on. Something different. Something different and, un, and inexplicable. Absolutely. So anybody that's got an opinion is fine with me. Yeah. Alice and I are joined by a friend and former co-worker at WJTV, Beth Miller, who is quite intuitive. She considers her gift to be from God. Listen as she shares about experiences she's had on the property. I had gotten up to go to the back door, and there was a bunch of people here. I think it was the night of the premiere that we were watching that over here, and I heard right in my ears somebody say, hey. And it was so loud, it was a man, and I jumped and turned around and all of them looked at me because they were sitting on the couch and they were like, what is it? And I said, there wasn't any of y'all. They were like, mm-mm. So I got that and then went into the backyard and heard, um, well, I was just wandering around out in the backyard recording and I said, uh, do you like that all these people are here? Because again, it was the night of the premiere and um, there was no response. And I said, do you, do you want to be found? And it said, no. And I do still have that one on my phone, so if you want to hear it later, I'll play it for you. Oh, uh, sure. Um, the first time I was here, we were upstairs, and I felt like, I don't know how to describe it. It wasn't that something went through me, but it kind of felt like that. And and I said, uh-uh, no, no. I was like, you can't. You're not going to do that. And at the same time, they saw on the monitors down here what looked like an orb that went through my head. And I, of course, did not know that at the time, but you can see me reach up and, and like move, and I said, uh-uh. I was like, nope. Almost every time I'm here, I'll get some kind of EVP. Or so Beth, you know, can I say this? Uh, Beth has prophetic dreams sometimes. Oh, yes. Okay. We've, we've so, chatted about stuff. Yeah, and so uh, she had one one time, and she described a place in the behind my yard, the one, the there's a space of land between mine and the creek down there. Well, first of all, she didn't even know there was a creek down there, but in her dream, never dream been back here. yeah, in, no, huh? in her dream, she saw a creek and she said there was a strange configuration of trees and there was a, <clears throat> a little um, uh, ravine, gully yeah. off the creek. So we got permission from the neighbor and we went back there and there it was. Yeah. <laughs> there was the creek, there was that a little gully, there was a, the, well, the, the tree that I remember, this may be different what you remember, but there was a tree, and then there was a huge pine yeah. tree growing at a 45 degree angle, mm -hmm. and it wasn't tippled over yeah, or anything, yeah. it was just growing at a 45 degree angle, uh, this tree, and, we, and it was, it, it stood out, you couldn't help but yeah. notice it. <clears throat> it made a little A-frame, a lopsided A-frame. If something, like I said, I say steps into the room, and I'm aware of it, then I will tend to be like, hmm. Or I'll say, yeah, or something like that. And it just, I was not aware that I do that until a friend of mine pointed it out. And she and said, you do that and you tap your fingers. <laughs> and I said, no, I do do that. Now I get, like I have right now, sort of a knot in my stomach, but I get that whenever I start talking about about, about so stuff. I, I say it's just my anxiety, but it could be something, you know, because usually I'll get that, or the chills, or a headache right here, which I had a minute ago while you were talking, and I thought... Mm. I actually cause people headaches a lot of times. He know. really does. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's really bad. <laughs> I wish I was just, just kidding. I just didn't. So. No, I'm just kidding. No, it's just... But that's just sort of when I know that, like, okay, there's something. And I try not to... Mm, I don't even say practice, but that's not the right word. Right. I really haven't had anything to do with any of it since I was here last, which was January. You know, well, you know yeah. what we've determined from AVPs, like that John's been getting forever, mm -hmm. um, we get one male and one female that's consistent and has been consistent from the whole time he's been here. Mm -hmm. And he can tell because of the little voice things that he sure. runs it across. So we've got, the, we call this female Lily and we call this mm -hmm. male Eric because a medium told us every time and they respond the to it. Yeah. yeah, they respond yeah. to it. So, but anyway, uh, so those are always here. You can, you can always, they're always here. Off now. But but we get others that come and go. I mean, you know, you'll, well, like we've heard really deep voices before. <laughs> we've heard children's voices. We've heard uh, women asking for help you know you know uh we've heard the others just come and go you know right. but those two are consistent right now just out of curiosity for for spatial mm -hmm. so where is crawl space it's up there you know, off my closet so it it's about be, like right there yeah it would be like right to up, your left to your when you walk in and, and, and turn 
Right, you walk into the closet. Well, the reason why I was asking, and I intentionally left a lot of space, is when I think you said crawl space, there was a thud, thud mm. that happened. Oh, neat, neat, neat. Well, well, maybe we'll get something up there. And then a lot of people have seen a, a figure at the top of the stairs from the right. get-go, from right. the get-go. And I never have, and I think that was probably a blessing because I wouldn't have wanted to do that. And, I mean, now, I mean, I probably still, I would, I would right now, I wouldn't mind if I, really, I wouldn't mind if a full body walk down right now. But if I'm here by myself, yeah, she's it's fine. She's got it's got company here. It's not not a problem basically. I mean, you you could have a, a whole mariachi band come down and it'd be okay right now. Yeah. <laughs> but I do feel like they're friendly because I think they're trying to help you. I think it's just a delayed reaction sometimes because yeah. everything that John asked happens. I mean, he's had a multitude of individual things that he's really? asked, and they didn't mm -hmm. you know, and, and they didn't happen before. And then after that, they would start happening, start happening, start happening, and then he would focus on something else and that would start happening right. yeah so there's something to do with consciousness mm -hmm. i mean i mean we just don't know but there's some reason but you know it's probably some scientific reason but it has something to do with consciousness i wonder if that's when that Rad was, first was went up there with his camera it turned off freaking he said that has never happened they were click click it's like turn it off we don't want to be in there well so. and that's out of all of this and all of this of course is subjectively interesting but what i found particularly fascinating is when stuff gets affected, but how rare phones get affected. Now that's not to say that mine's never been, mm -hmm. but typically yeah. I've always used an iPhone, which can pick up disembodied voices. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of times with this, very rarely with just the, the thing on there, but if I have an external boom, I'll, I'll get that because that's also more sensitive and it's specific. Mm -hmm. But rarely will they get drained and rarely will they glitch. But that has has yeah. happened. I can tell you one thing. Uh, when they were, oh, let's see, what were they doing? They were putting in our home security system. And uh, one of the guys that did it, you know, he knew Sabrina. He used to work here. And uh, so when he got home, he called Sabrina because he knew her. His uh, daughter was her friend. And he said, he said, uh, did the electronics ever get messed up there? And she said, yeah, you know, why? And he said that his phone was having crazy messages <laughs> up here that didn't and one of them one of them he's now i know she said one of he said one of them said go back go back to the house and he, <laughs> he said i'm not ever going back to that house I, I needed those windows replaced i had been needing those windows replaced for years and i couldn't find anybody to do it because uh one person would supply the glass and you'd have to have somebody else to repair the wood and coordinate it was a pain in the butt well that's a and lot of glass Very it unique. is it yeah. is it is and, and then in COVID, nobody was doing anything and and so i was just sitting here and i thought oh my god my house just falling apart and i was really wanting it done and so um <clears throat> so I, I passed a place called which I looked, you know, knew who they were, but I didn't, never met him. But anyway, so I called him and he was just, he was the honor. And he said, oh yeah, I can do that. And uh, uh, he came over and he looked at it and he measured and he said, yeah, I can do that. He said, we can do the wood, we can do the windows. You don't have to coordinate with different people. And I thought, man, this is a dream come true. I really did. I thought, Lord, have mercy. Mm -hmm. And so uh, he went over there and I didn't say anything about this house. And he went over there and he stood at the bottom of the stairs and he, he looked up and he said, uh, uh, is this that haunted house? And I said, yeah, whatever. And he, <laughs> look, yeah. he, he went out the door. He, he had his phone and he just went out the door. He didn't say goodbye. He didn't say boo turkey. He didn't say anything. And I thought, you know, I thought he got a family emergency or something. He got a message. And so uh, I, I didn't, it was right before Christmas. I didn't call him back for two or three days till after Christmas. And then he said, I don't know who you are. And I said, I said, what do you mean? You don't remember coming over to my house and you asked me if that was a haunted house? He said, yeah. He said, uh, he said, I'll send two guys over tomorrow. Well, he didn't. He didn't. And so when I called again, nobody would answer the phone. At that business, nobody would answer the phone. Nobody would answer the phone. So he must have told him not to answer that number or something. But anyway, <laughs> anyway. Alice getting ghosted. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so, so Sabrina, you know, who lives here, knows everybody. She was somewhere having coffee in town. And she said that he was sitting there with another couple of guys, friends, and she heard him talking about the house. And she worked here, you know, so she was listening. And uh, he said that uh, he'd had an unsettling experience and, and that he was not coming back here. And so, uh, okay, you know, and I didn't want to just go knock on his door and ask him why, because I figured I'd scare him to death you know, if I walked over there. <laughs> and so, uh, but anyway, uh, now, uh, fast forward another couple of years. My neighbor over there, she had a problem with her plumbing and stuff, you know, flooding. So she called him, and she said, 
that he, she told me this, that he asked her on the phone, he said, are you next door to that haunted house? And she said, uh, yes. And he said, uh, I'm not coming over there. Oh. He said that he was afraid that something would get in the vehicle with him and go home with Isn't him. Isn't that funny? Mm -hmm. He won't even work on my neighbor's house. He so looked upstairs and he said that he saw a, a, a shatter figure go up the wall. And he said he had seen that kind of thing when he was young. That's why he got all into the field in the first place. Because mm -hmm. he would hear voices sometimes and see these wisps and shatters. And he mm -hmm. said that's what made him come back. And uh, Elizabeth Saint in mm -hmm. the second film, mm -hmm. Electrical engineer. Oh yes. Uh, she said uh, she was up there and she was doing stuff. And then she said, "Does anybody ever see a figure up here at the top stairs?" And I said, "Yeah." What do you, what do you say? Tall, shattered, thin male. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what John saw. That's what she saw. And I'm assuming that's what he saw. Yeah. Because. And he's just minding his own business. He just minds his own business. Said, I think that yeah. figure shows itself that those were newcomers every time i think it just he just maybe shows himself when he's wondering if somebody needs to be here so i asked her if she'd clean my house one day she said she would so i went to vicksburg and when i came back uh, uh she said um and this was a black girl and mm -hmm. she said uh, you know your house is haunted and i said mm -hmm. why do you say that mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. and she said uh, i was down here and she said i looked up and she said there was a woman up there a ghost mm -hmm. she said she was up there and she had her arms folded like that and she was looking look down and looking up at me oh. and I, we've heard that expression oh, anyway mm -hmm. she said and uh, she was just looking at me and she said uh i, I used to live in the haunted house and i just told her i'm supposed to be here and so she said you know that was the end of but i'm like so especially with your experiences up to 2011 mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and then up, up to today mm -hmm. How has this defined your perception? Because let's say in 2011, you may have thought one thing about ghosts or things of unexplained nature, but now how, how has that changed since all this? Because it must have. Well, you know, I never, uh, I, I was never somebody who was extraordinarily interested in ghosts or anything until I moved here. I never had any experiences before I moved here. And then when we moved here, they were constant, but I had people around, so it kind of diffused it. It was interesting. Uh, and, and sometimes Ashley would tell me something at night, like she said she saw a shadow at the foot of her bed at night, and that scared me. That really did scare me. But just uh, ordinarily, things moving around, you'd find something here and there. Uh, it was odd, but, and, but I had other people around. But uh, after that light experience, then I felt like I was being watched. Then I felt like it just took on a whole new character. And even then, I didn't necessarily feel that I was in danger, but I felt like something was definitely aware of me. I mean, you know, and uh, and then uh, I remember the first time I heard EVPs, but and that that uh, it took me a while to get over that because I thought even though I know there's things are moving and voices, I mean, not voices, but music and things like that. I see all these things and I hear these things, but when they put a voice on it, that was startling. That took me a while to get used to because I'm thinking now that makes it tangible and it's like there's a conscious presence here and uh, that's that was disconcerting. It really was because it's like now I've got to, I can't just file it away. It's, it's a real presence who's really here and really is watching me and it really is. And that was a nerve. You asked me some other questions about UFO stuff. Mm -hmm. I had some other light experiences, you know, after that, after the one, the major one, that I thought was probably UFO stuff. And so that put, that added a whole different dimension to it. Mm -hmm. And then now that I read that that's possible, that there are alien presences out there, um, I, I, I don't know if I'm really afraid, but, I, but I'm totally not sure what that is. While interviewing Alice, I notice my K2 meter registering high levels of EMF and discuss with Alice and Beth how one should be skeptical of this device. However, I do capture what seems to be an intelligent response with the K2. So see, so, so, so to me, it's like what's interesting is that that's sitting there that strong, which is pretty decent. But then it also just goes away. Well, maybe they're here and then they zip over here. Yeah, because usually what I was about to ask you was, is it, wow, is it always no. this strong? No, it's not. I mean, it could, no. It's is it strong? Well, this was almost to red. Yeah. Wow. Right now, it's gone, and I haven't moved my hand. So, and now it's yeah. back. I think it moved. I think they moved. I think they really moved. So, again, you get into... Go, okay. go right ahead. Because, you know, yeah, I mean, again, again, when you talk about like EMF fields, it's like if it was like, okay, there's power, 
Well, so like if so see so in this case, this makes me think. This makes me think. You know, it's it's phones, but I always tell people to do that. Now, and here's why. See, I put that on airplane mode, and it's nothing. So to me, what it was doing mm -hmm. could have been a hundred percent the phone. But you would have thought, oh, well, something's going on. But it's also like what people don't think about is like walkie-talkies. Yep. Mm -hmm. if, if you're talking on a walkie-talkie, it doesn't matter if that person was out in the yard. If they fired off that walkie-talkie, this would go off. Mm -hmm. And people say, oh, I've got something. It's like, well, hold on something. Someone's using a signal. So it's kind of like that gets into the whole debunking yeah, yeah. things like that. Because what's clearly interesting now, and like, you know, I was going to make sure, okay, that's off, and now that's on. Look at that. Hmm. Okay, so now we got nothing. And again, a test. Mm -hmm. So see, and really, I always shake it to make sure there's nothing there. But see, now it's not doing what it was doing, but this is on airplane mode. But like, at this point, if this went stupid like it was doing again, then that would be significant. Mm -hmm. But it's those little little things to test out. But I have been told that. He said, but I've never found it. And I said, yeah, you got a graveyard. I said, you need to talk to the guy that looks like uh, the big guy from the Green Mile. And he said, that's my neighbor. And I said, your neighbor looks like the guy from the Green Mile? And he said, yes. He said, he looks just like him. He said, I'll show you a picture of him. And he did. And I was like, that's the guy. I said, you need to ask him about the spirits that are out there. I just got chill bumps all over both arms and my legs. Anyway. How about and my whole right side like and, and this thing was, this was going red and now it's nothing. It's weird because I, I feel it on both sides. It's mm -hmm. almost like they sort of, I call it stepping into the room. It's almost like they, right they mm -hmm. step in. Mm -hmm. So, um, ugh, I mean, it's just all over both arms. Not yet. Oh, oh, and Very yet again. Sweet. Is it still going off? No, it just, this whole entire time it's been dead. And I've been occasionally, really? like even when I was talking to Alice, I kept glancing down. You have to get out of the and see again, this is here, this is when, and again, EMF fields it's can be natural. Me. And mine's on airplane mode, I think. So yeah, I it's it's definitely sure. not the phone. And see, it'll go just completely dead. But the fact now that it's popping up, let's see. And here again, this whole entire time you've been telling that, this mm -hmm. has been quiet. Mm -hmm. Which did is it, where... Did it go up again? No, it, no, it's just been quiet. No, it just so so that's that's why, to me, that's why it's useful to pay attention. Okay. Because, But I see the moment, now that I started talking about it, now it's like, oh, okay, well, we'll, well, we'll I'll make it do, do a little are something. Are we uh, talking about the spirit in the top hat? Are you with us? Is that what it is? Um, can, can I ask your name? Because I always call you Eric. Is it okay to call you Eric? And do you try to help us sometimes? Are you the one who tries to help when John asks you to do things? And are you okay with working with us on just doing things to know that show that we can communicate? Now, just to know if this is, you know, you. Can you step away from this device and just make the lights go off? Oh, there it goes. Oh my goodness. Thank, okay. you. Thank, you. Thank you for the confirmation. The following are fascinating pieces of recorded evidence. I've enhanced the audio so you can hear these knocks and pounding noises better. You might skeptically think that these are just typical house settling or reacting to temperature noises. Could some be? Perhaps. But one I can only describe as like a fist slamming against a wall. We all came in and we would always, you know, uh, say we, John wants this guy. I that. And John would, all came in and we would always, you know, uh, say we, John wants this guy. I that. And John would, all came in and we would always, you know, uh, say we, John wants this guy. I that. And John would, all came in and we would always, you know, uh, say we, John wants this guy. I that. And John would, so that might have, I mean, you know, who knows? Mm -hmm. Who knows? Mm -hmm. We don't know, but it's just a bunch of stuff tied together. I mean, yeah. I mean, bits and pieces that may tie together, may not tie together, but it's odd. Yeah. Right. Right, and I'll. I heard that now, but it's odd. Yeah. Right, right, and I'll. I heard that now, but it's odd. Yeah. Right, right, and I'll. I heard that now, but it's odd. Yeah. Right, right, and I'll. 
I heard that now. Yeah. That's the second time. It did it while you were talking. Then. Oh, didn't hear that. Now, see, and that's the kind of thing that's where, you know, you get into the, okay, house settling. Yeah. <laughs> well, it could be, you know, I mean, it, it could be. Yeah. It could be. Uh, but, the, you know, that's the difference between like that, which you could say is that, but then yeah. if you hear something that's more like a thud or a bang, mm -hmm. it's like, well, that's not exactly normal. Look, I have heard sound. I've been sitting right here before, and I heard, I mean, I can't even make it as loud as it went, but up there you go, thump, thump, thump. Thunk. And it did that for a long time, yeah. and I'm like, it nothing. I walked up there, I didn't well, see right. anything. Right, yeah, that's that's when you have the multiples. It's like, house ain't settling that much. So, <laughs> no, no, and it was wrong. Um, it was like a pet. It's not wrong. It's I'm not just wrong. saying. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I, uh, dream about the backyard. I was sitting there. He I heard knocking just in the backyard. I was sitting there. The backyard. I was sitting there. The backyard. I was sitting there. He, you like that colored ball up there? Give it a push. That'd be weird. Yeah. You can do it. There you go. I heard you. Thank you. You can do it. There you go. I heard you. Thank you. You can do it. There you go. I heard you. Thank you. You can do it. There you go. I heard you. Thank you. Don't tell us we didn't hear that. Yeah, I heard you. Thank you. Can you push that ball right there? I saw something right there. I guess you got a cat out there. Oh, we do. Because it's funny. I saw movement and I was like, I'm thinking that was a fuzzy tail. I wasn't a cat so. making that noise. Uh, I don't know what that noise no, was. No, that was a... That was really good. That was a loud noise. Could you do it again? If you can do that, I'm thinking you could push that stroller. Would you do that for me? That'll make a loud noise. Oh, John would be so happy. He could come over here wherever he is. <laughs> can you push that stroller down for John? That was such a loud noise and it almost came from everywhere. But Did you hear it again? Did you hear that? I didn't hear it again, but I heard it the first time. I thought it came from the But that was the was a little bit louder maybe than when we were talking and I heard the thud mm -hmm. before. It was very close to that. Maybe a little it bit louder. It just came from it's just hard to place it, but it was But it just feels like it's like It was like there. in the yeah. You wanna you know? go up there? Can we go yeah. upstairs? Yeah. Yeah. Do you care if we come up? Go ahead, chill ups. Do you care if we come upstairs? We explore the house further, including the upstairs and the crawl space. No evidence is documented there, but while I was interviewing Alice downstairs, Beth calls us back into the main room. Strange experience. And so uh, that's, okay. And that's when I said, Alice. yeah. What? Come here, hurry. You do, okay. Did you hear that? Mm. I asked them if, I turned the REM pod on, mm -hmm. and then I asked if they knew who I was, and then I said, do you know who Brad is? Do you know who John is? And I said, do you want them to be here? And that thing went completely nuts. What, that? The organ. Oh, the organ, not the totally I, I heard the REM pod going off earlier. It did a minute ago, but I was just setting it. Okay, well, you can- Can you do it again? Okay, well, you can- Can you do it again? Okay, well, you can- Can you do it again? Okay, well, you can- Can you do it again? What is it, is it recorded? It's recorded on my phone, yeah. but I didn't, yeah. I mean, like, it went nuts. It was uh, making sounds playing. Mm -hmm. yeah, oh, okay. Well, it was just, it was making yeah, all okay. kind of weird stuff. Like, yeah. Do it again for well, me, please, like, so Alice and Rick can see that. Would you mind? Do you want us to get Brad and John up here? You want to talk to them? It was when I mentioned them that it uh -huh. went nuts. No? Don't want to do it again? How about the oh. REM pod? I know you're in here. 
I would like you to touch the organ again. Show her. What was that? Show her how you did that. That was really neat. Okay, what about Kendall? Do you want to see Kendall again? And Vera? Steve? Tango? Yeah. You want us to get them for you? Okay. Do the REM pod too. Can you do that too? Does it's this on. Have, does this have anything to do with Ashley? Ashley oh. is Alice's adult daughter who passed away a few years ago. Ashley, are you here? I know you brought that organ here, so I'm wondering if, if you're trying to show me that you're here. We hear you. We hear you. Does it do that? Does it ever do that? I've never heard it the whole time we've it's, been it's, here. It's done that before with Brad and John when they called Ashley's name. Before. Really? Mm -hmm. Ashley? This is a long time ago, but yeah. I have chill bumps oh. all over my arms. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Me too. Ashley, do you know... <laughs> See, it hasn't done it all day. You know, I was going to say, do you know that I could hear you? And it, and it went off before I finished my sentence. Considering the organ had been turned on shortly after I arrived, it didn't make the distorted noise until Beth was asking questions and continued to make noise seemingly in response to questions. This doesn't entirely make this evidence of ghostly communication, but it cannot be dismissed either. Okay. <laughs> going off again. It hasn't been going off uh -uh. in conjunction. No. Okay. no, that's the first time this has gone on. I also visited with Dr. Thomas Lucky. A champion of holistic health care, Dr. Lucky is a pastoral health coach, minister, teacher, author, and speaker. Alice visited with Dr. Lucky several years ago about her experiences. We have power. It's just like uh, with Alice's situation here. You have power in yourself to speak to this enemy, these spirits that come in and they try to cause problems in your life. You have more power than them. They have to have authority to do anything in your life. Exactly. And, and so you give them that. authority. Yes. So you got to look at your environment. Are you making things conducive for things to come in like mm -hmm. this, actually? Because uh, uh, sure, if you make it conducive, they'll they'll appear. I don't yeah. know what your answer is. I don't believe anybody knows, but I've seen too much of the supernatural take place, and I believe that everything's energy, mm -hmm. and uh, and it makes sense to me. So I, I really don't know. My my opinion is that uh, as far as uh, the spiritual world of things, I say is anything is possible. Uh, that uh, we're, we're, I think personally in my belief system, personally not an organization I stand for or anything else, I believe that we, our spirit actually can linger and, uh, and is waiting for that glorified body that we will receive because uh, our body is not glorified. But I believe, I believe God can do whatever he wants to do with the spirit actually. So he wants us to come down here and encourage. I you know, you've seen people uh, too uh, that are on the verge of dying uh, and they'll see their relatives. Mm -hmm. uh, so I can't discount all that. I've never been there myself, but uh, so I can't say it's not, I'm not gonna say there's not good spirits around here. Mm -hmm. I definitely believe in ghosts. I believe in, in the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. that's, that's enough of me as a ghost is concerned. Uh, and, uh, and I believe if you got the Holy Ghost power, you got none of these other ghosts even matter anyway. So you, you can, all those are under subjection. When we take scientific ways of trying to figure things out, that's based off of facts. But the problem is, is facts really facts? Because the supernatural is above facts. We don't know but very little. Science says we only know, know about 90, I mean, 2% of what we know that we really didn't know. I felt like a presence over there between the door and the wall in the corner. I just, the doors would, would have been closed. Mm -hmm. And I just, I felt like right there, 
there was a big circle of consciousness that was looking at me. That's what I felt. And, uh, and it was just like dispassionate, you know, just observing like with no emotion, but, but it's like, oh, I, you know, I was terrified. I didn't know what to do. And so uh, I just covered my head up and I dozed off and I, you know, kind of a fitful sleep. And then when I woke up, it was still dark in here. And I looked down here and somewhere down here, there were like three buttons of light, like uh, about the size of a deck of cards on the top right, top left, and on the bottom left. It was like three red buttons. And uh, we didn't have cameras then. And uh, it, I, I, I really didn't know what infrared was. But now that I do know what infrared is like, it looks like infrared red buttons. And uh, so I was staring at that because I knew that was not right either. That was odd. And, uh, and then after I just stared at it, a few seconds, five, six, seven seconds or something. Then I just had this acute awareness that, that something was having eye contact with me. It knew I was looking at it and I knew it was looking at me. And I stared at that and when that happened, it just went blank and it went out. It was truly a treat to visit with Alice and Beth this fall afternoon. Alice's home lives up to the hype. However, this story isn't about a haunted house or the house in between. These tales exist because of Alice, because Alice has experienced them and continues to experience them. And she recalls these experiences with crystal clear clarity and shares hospitality and kindness like a true Southern lady. What's next for the house in between? It's most likely that the house will continue to be monitored, investigated, and documented by John and Amy Bullard Brad Cooney, and so many others. It seems to have many more tales to tell. I, for one, am looking forward to my next visit to this amazing home. Reporting for Unexplained Cases, I'm Rick Garner.